A key four-game homestand for the Colorado Avalanche begins tonight against the New York Rangers. The Avs need some wins to stay in the Western Conference playoff race, while the Blue Shirts have hopes for a bit for a division title from Denver. Altitude brings you Colorado against New York. And good evening, I'm Mike Haynes along with Peter McNabb. And Peter, we're going to get a chance tonight to see one of the great goal scorers going right now in the National Hockey League, Rick Nash. He's already got 33 goals this year. Yeah, and a lead that's terribly difficult to score goals, 33 goals this year. And Mike, I'll make a case right now. Rick Nash has been the best forward in the National Hockey League this season. He has 33 goals for the New York Rangers. They started off the season after 25 games. They were one game over 500 and struggled, but Nash kept them afloat. They have played great hockey since then. There are 20 wins, six losses, and one tie since that, and Rick Nash has continued to be that one guy night in, night out for the New York Rangers. So the big story for the Rangers right now, their top goaltender, Henrik Lundqvist, out at least another three weeks. That means Cam Talbot has got to carry the load for the Avalanche. If they have any hope of making the playoffs, Semyon Varlamov has to continue his sterling work. And that's the key, Mike, just has to be hit. Semyon Varlamov just has to play the way he's played. He has been brilliant for the Avalanche in the last nine home games. He's seven and two. He has been that guy every night for the Colorado Avalanche. He knows right now that the Avalanche, if they're going to get in it, they have to score some more goals, but he can only do his job, and he's been terrific for the Avalanche, especially of late. But here is a real story for the New York Rangers. The Rangers want to get another score. Cam Talbot will be their goaltender for the next while. Can he handle it? Can he handle what Lundqvist has always given the New York Rangers almost, I mean, great goaltending? Do they stay alive in the Eastern Conference? If not, do they have to go out and spend their money on a goaltender? So this is a lot of pressure on a guy that just hasn't played down. This is only his second year in the National Hockey League. We're going to see what Cam's tablet is made of. All right, we'll see it tonight. The Avalanche and the Rangers, they met earlier this season. Avalanche won it in a shootout in Madison Square Garden. But now for the Avalanche. The beginning of their season-long four-game homestand, and it begins tonight. Looking for two points, and they're going to try to do it against the New York Rangers on altitude. Autotrader.com said, styling makes the Optima look more like a $50,000 sports sedan. When was the last time you saw a $50,000 sports sedan with a starting MSRP at only $22,515? No wonder KBB.com said it looks even better than some sedans costing twice as much. Plus, it's backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. There's nothing average about the Optima, including the starting MSRP at $22,515. Hurry to your nearest Colorado Kia dealer today. Village Inn asks, what's your, my incredible VIB? Choose any four different items from over 30 delicious options. I'm having an orange blossom crepe, bacon, eggs, and made from scratch buttermilk pancakes. I call it Mama's Sweet Treat. I'm having a cheese omelet, sausage with fruit, and a biscuit with gravy. I call it Grandpa's Gravy Train. You decide, what's your, my incredible VIB? Just $7.49, all day, every day, only at Village Inn. Chevy trucks always find new roads to conquer. We started with the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. And now, introducing the pickup that unanimously won the 2015 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. All made of high-strength steel, only at one place, your Chevy dealer. Now during Truck Month, GM owners can trade up to get a total value of $8,000 on select Silverados in stock the longest. See your Colorado Chevy dealer. Mentors, philanthropists, coaches. There's more than one way to bring energy to a community, and our people know them all. Welcome to the Altitude Sports Game Break. It's the Avs and Rangers in just a minute. Kyle Keith in the Altitude Studios. John Mitchell played 63 games for the New York Rangers in 2011-2012 before coming here to Colorado. Safe to say he knows this team well, and earlier Mike Haynes caught up with him. Thank you so much, Kyle. Well, John, no secret that your team would like to score more goals, and if it was easy to do, everybody would be scoring 10 tonight. But what do you think the Avalanche need to do to get more goals tonight? 
Well, I think we just got to have traffic, get lots of pucks to the net. You know, sometimes we don't get enough shots on goal. We're only getting 20 shots a night, so I think we really got to try and get, you know, 30 plus shots and uh, see what happens. What's the scouting report on the New York Rangers? Well, they're a good team. They're fast. You know, they play quick. Uh, you know, they their their wingers really hop in behind our defensemen. You know, on the breakout, especially Nash. So, you know, we have to be conscious of that when he's out there. But uh, you know, we got to play the same way. We got lots of speed too. All right. Thanks for your time. Have a great game, Doug. All right. Thanks, Mike. Back to you now, Kyle. All right. Time for some hockey. Look at that. 5,280 feet. Hope that burns the lungs just a little for New York. It's the Avs and Rangers next on Altitude. Colorado Avalanche Hockey on Altitude is brought to you by Dodge. See your local Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Or go to Dodge.com and check out our powerful lineup. Old Chicago, with 36 beers on tap and pizza so good that it's in the name, experience the pizza and craft beer authority. Old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room. Office Liquidators, Colorado's lowest prices and largest selection on new and used office furniture. And by Chevy. Stop into your Colorado Chevy dealer today to learn about the Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. Well, the one trip into town for the New York Rangers here in Denver at Pepsi Centers. They face the Colorado Avalanche. And we look at tonight's Ford starting lineup. And as always, we find the goaltending matchup interesting. And for several reasons, especially for the Rangers, will Cam Talbot be able to do the job in place of Henrik Lundqvist? Absolutely, Mike. This is going to be paramount for these New York Rangers. Talking to the New York Ranger people today, I mean, Lundqvist, Mike, he got hit in the throat. And it, it's a scare when they said it's like a hose with a bubble in the hose, a, a garden hose. It's just the vein in his neck is just not right right now. It's going to be two and a half weeks before he does an MR, another MRI. Now, he, he is on the trip with the New York Rangers. It's a dad's trip, so that's why he brought his dad. He's on the trip, but he's, he can ride the bike a little bit, so he's a long way off from, from being ready to play hockey. I think the key there, Peter, is he's really not getting looked at by the doctor for another trip. Yep, and then yep. they make a determination. Why don't we take a look yeah. back, Peter, and see? And this is scary. Yeah. This is re if you you got a, a goaltender for a son, this is scary. Yeah, absolutely, because it looks basically harmless. You know, but it gets underneath that little protective guard that goaltenders wear nowadays. And you know, he was hurting, and he was. I mean, there's no question that the the, the medical staff did a great job right away on Lundqvist. So Cam Talbot has the spotlight on him, and meanwhile. Nash drills the puck in the wide of Varlamov. And for the Avalanche, and when you look at the other side of it, Peter, Varlamov making his 11th consecutive start. Continues to be a, a personal best for him in terms of consecutive starts. And for the Avalanche, they know if they have any shot, they've got to start scoring and giving a Varlamov an opportunity to keep playing the way he's been playing. Yeah, I mean, Mike, you know, if we're just going to sit down and say, okay, for Patrick Waugh's club, they changed their defensive system. It, it's worked. Varley's been great in that. The defensemen, uh, you know, they, they're much maligned, but they do a really good job. It's been scoring. There hasn't been that big goal for the Avalanche. And if that can turn around, this is a club that can start to, you know, only 28 games to go. If you're looking at the numbers, Mike, pure at the numbers, if you probably have to go 20 and 8, but you can't look at that because that's, that's you can't look at the mountain. You just got to take that first yep. step, right? Absolutely. And Le Vignon, what a year he had last year. First year with the New York Rangers, what does he do? They go all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, and they lose in five games, Mike, but all three games in L.A. were lost in overtime. See his career period. He's already at 498 wins. Yeah. This is a very good coach. He took the Vancouver Canucks to his seventh game of the Stanley Cup. So uh, he, is, he is one with... A couple of different teams with Vancouver and with the Rangers proving he's, he's just simply a good coach. Here's a chance down low. Pass back to the point. Shot goes wide of the net. And Breer will chip and send the puck out to center ice. Rangers are on a four-game road trip, which began in Toronto. They got a win there. And uh, it will continue for a couple of more games after this stop here in Denver for the Avalanche is a season a long homestand uh, lasting four games they've got Dallas on Saturday night and Monday against Arizona and then the defending champs next week as the Kings come to town to face the Avs for the first time this year 
Peter, you almost get a sense. You almost got to go the distance here on this whole oh. Get, get boy, seven, hopefully eight points after the Avalanche on this homestand. Oh, you know, when, when you look at when you look at the West right now, let's let's go back just a few games ago it seems, and the Avs were two out. When they started against Detroit last week, they were four out, and it, it looked positive, as Patrick Watt said in his press conference today. But boy, these last three days were ugly for the Avalanche. I mean, everything bad that could have happened every night since the Avalanche have played Winnipeg happened, and they're sitting right now, and they're one big game. When you look at the, that wild card, Mike, Calgary is at Los Angeles tonight, so one of those teams is going to pick up two points. Shot to the net, save made by goaltender Semyon Varlamov. The Avalanche have dressed seven defensemen in this game. And they scratch of Mark Andre Kleech. And we see Elliott, number 46, he's the seventh defenseman dressed this evening for Colorado. Duchesne chasing the puck for the Avalanche. Mark Stahl back for it for the Rangers. Duchesne pushes the puck break up the wall for Iginla. The Avalanche short of forward as we begin play here tonight. Duchesne to Tangay. Centered back into the slot, but it slipped away and out to center. And Tyson Barry missed a couple of games, didn't play against Detroit or Minnesota. Returned almost a bit surprisingly against Winnipeg last Sunday. And boy, did he play well. Scored a goal in the first period, and it just feels like a different team, Peter, when he's in the lineup for the Avalanche. And he's back in tonight. In fact, there's just so few defensemen in this league that can actually carry the puck out of trouble in your own zone. Shot by Nash gets tipped up into the screen out of play. And for Tyson Barry, with, with, when he's out there with Elliott, he's on that left side. Number four, I mean, you you chart a shift for Tyson Barry when he's moving. He is all over the ice. He's down low. He can get back. He's got great confidence in his skating ability to make if he takes the chance. He's not quite like Kyle Kaminsky. Remember we asked Kyle Kaminsky, great, the, the, maybe the best skating defenseman the Avalanche have ever had. Do you ever get scared? You won't get back. Oh, oh no, that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> never? And he said, never. Centering drive blocked in front of the net by Derek Stepan. And then the uh, puck comes all the way down the ice into the Colorado zone. Into the corner. Kreider for the Rangers. Play back to the point. Gardy's shot gets tipped, and another puck goes up high. And this time again, hitting the screen and out of play. Well, for Tyson Berry, Mike, you know, Last year he had 25 assists. He's already had 25 assists this season for the Avalanche. He's played 52 games this year, 31 points. It, and it's just one of those things as we're, we're seeing him emerge. And I, you know, people keep saying to me, you know, have we seen the best of Tyson Brett? And I say not even close. It is a very interesting position. A true offensive defenseman in the league now where everybody charged everything you do all the time, you have to be unbelievably creative. Peter, you mentioned the fact about him being able to get the puck out of the zone, and that's a bigger attribute than many people realize. That you're stuck in your own zone, you're trying to get out of trouble, and it's not easy to do, to weave your way through a, sometimes five guys to get out. Instead of having to pass it out, he's that one avalanche defenseman that can actually take it and carry it out. Lucarello makes the pass, and he's on a six-game of point streak. Shot by Nash, broke the stick of Aginla, and the puck tipped out to center ice. Picked up by Duchesne, he's got a man going down the middle. Throws back towards the boards, and trapped there by the Rangers. Quick pass by Broussard, and the puck shot ahead, and into the uh, Colorado zone. Early on, we played four minutes and 15 seconds of the first period. No score, shot hits the chest of Varlamov. Another chance and another save by Varlamov. And you get a sense of why this Rangers team, Peter, has scored 22 goals in their last six games. I mean, they're averaging close to four goals a game lately. And they just keep coming at you. And they do. You look at the numbers. 11 different guys have mm -hmm. scored goals in those games. You know, sometimes you'll get in a streak like that, and you got one line that's red hot, like St. Louis right. with, you know, with Bacchus' line. I mean, they were just carrying them for a while. But this is a real team effort. And, Mike, but the strength of the New York Rangers, besides Lundquist, is the defensive core. They have a great passing, mobile defensive group. Stewart moves the puck around for Everberg. Lost the puck. Rangers steal it away. 
Drop back to the point. Klein moves it around. Stepniak lets it go to the corner. And Stepniak got it. Makes the pass to the side of the net. Back to the point for Kevin Klein. He shoots through a lot of traffic. Skins wide. Centered across, and the tip sends a more chance wide. Back behind, off the shelf, drops in the corner. Chased by Dominic Moore. And the puck pop back behind the net. Whacked around with the backhand by Stewart. Mitchell handles the puck for the Avalanche. Come to the cross, and it's dumped in by Holden of the Avalanche. Rangers get it. 4 nothing shot advantage for New York. No score in the game. Line long pass, tipped on. Going in, Haglin. Grabbed it, held up by Elliott. O'Reilly takes a penalty. As Kevin Hayes was tripped up by Ryan O'Reilly, and the Rangers are going to get the first power play opportunity. Oh, Ryan O'Reilly had only one penalty called on him all last year. Headed to the penalty box and for O'Reilly. And it's now 12 Chris minutes of penalties, penalties this New York season. Number 13, Trubis for concealing the puck. Colorado number 90, Trubis oh, for Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. They are sending Hayes into the box as well. well, well it's, uh, I was watching this play. I was wondering, you know, after they touch it, he goes down and watch. Watch him put his hand up right, right there and sweep it back. Like, there's the penalty right there. And you talk about a needless penalty. That's just one of those things that, you know, I was a young guy, first year in the league. Right. And, I mean, because... It was a penalty, and you're in the offensive zone, and you put your hand. Uh, coach is oh, just like that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they love those. Okay, negate a penalty with a play like that. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking. <laughs> While you're on the bench. <laughs> From the press box, I'll talk to you next. Yeah, no. I'll talk to you on the plane ride. Yeah. Here. Oh, all right. So we got four on fours, but O'Reilly does take the penalty. <laughs> and uh, that's just his sixth uh, minor <laughs> penalty of the season. By the way, Ryan O'Reilly played his 400th National Hockey League game tonight. And I was, I was reading that, and the next thing I know, I saw his dad here. So his dad's here to help him celebrate number 400. All right, big milestone. And we go to four-on-four four hockey. Duchesne, Tangay, along with Redmond and Hayda, the four skaters out for Colorado. And a puck push straight. Hayda pinching in. That put a little pressure on. That allows the Ad to keep it in. The pass comes to Duchesne, tipped out to center. Tangay knocked it in, delay offside on the Avalanche. And Colorado wants to get their four skaters off, and that is happening. And the Rangers wait to make some changes themselves. Ryan McDonough moves the puck to center. Zuccarello, six game point streak for Zuccarello. Decline, centering try. That gets blocked by Stewart. Hanging on with a climb behind the net. The puck kicks straight. Pass top of the circle for Zuccarello. Makes the handoff for Sard with Mitchell right on him. Leads the puck against the board. Zuccarello played it back to the point. Slid across for Klein. He winds. He shoots. And that one had to hurt. Stewart is down on the ice. Slow and getting up. But he's up. And we'll be back. No score from Denver. Like I, you were at the press conference, I, I saw it, and it was interesting as we, we talked about this club and learning how to win and lose, you know, the th different things. And one of the guys that knows how to win is Brad Stewart. You see it right there, Mike, what he does, Stewart? He, he, he let Samir Varlamov see the puck the whole way. He was actually standing off to the sauce, and he does a terrific job of that, shielding guys. And he, I'm sure he's sitting there going, are you, are you crazy, kid? You hit me. You're going to miss the net by 12 feet. I'm standing over here. I'm letting the goalie see it. The last thing I think is that the guy's going to bounce one off my, sh my leg. Oh, well, no stick. That well, was still four on four hockey. Now the 40 seconds remaining in the O'Reilly and Hayes penalties. Yeah, let's get the face off. Puck dragged behind by uh, Barry. Trying to make a pass back and connection wasn't made. Nash out for the Rangers and his shot. Steered aside by goaltender Simeon Barlomo. Puck works along the far wing. Abs take it away. Quick pass up by East. Landis got passed through the middle. Broken up. But Landis got chased the puck down. He's got it. Wines takes the shot. Shoots. That's blocked. And Landis got the only man back. At least temporarily. The pass, though, zipped away from Dan Boyle. And Varlamo will handle the puck and get a face off. As we take a look at tonight's winning combo brought to you by Black Jack Pizza.
really been looking forward to this game because, one, the pace. The New York Rangers play with pace. They, they play a good defensive style, but they move the puck up quickly. The Avalanche, can they match it? And Talbot, Mike, he is going to be huge. March 2nd, the trade deadline is coming in a hurry. The Rangers have a lot of hope of winning, still winning their division, not just making the playoffs, winning the division, because they're only four points out. Shot goes wide to the net. Penalties are, are over. On O'Reilly and Hayes, we're back to five-on-five five hockey. Pass. Scooped up and carried to center by O'Reilly. It's thwarted on his chance to get through the middle. Which pass to Everbird. Pass broken up. Rangers have got it. Pass by Hagel. Gets in by Miller. Makes the handoff. Shoots it towards the bar long off, and he'll steer the puck wide. Hagelin after the puck. He's the guy you got to keep an eye on. Can he skate? Earl Hagel, great speed. Hey, moves the puck behind the net. Martin St. Louis with the puck. Well, that Wiley veteran makes the handoff. Stepping shot, got tipped wide of the net. The puck slides along the end boards, comes around. Tipped in play, former Avalanche. And Hunwick handled it. He wears number 44 for the Rangers. Line coming back for New York. Long pass to Feist. Handled by St. Louis. Lost the puck. Here come the Avalanche. Shot! And the save made by Talbot on the blast from Matt Duchesne. Well, Duchesne coming off a game in Winnipeg. He had a goal and an assist. And Mike, we, we've seen him. We know Matt Duchesne. He is, you don't want to say streaky. Yeah, that, that's not necessarily fair. But when he gets going, he gets hot. He can carry the club. And that's right now what the Avalanche need. They need one of their core four guys to really get going, really start to go, carry the power play, carry the offense, drag the team along offensively. Boyle sends the puck off the boards in front of the team benches, back into the ab zone. up off the glass by Holden. Played out the center. Again, had it, lost it to Nash. Shoots the puck wide. Battle in the corner for the puck. Duchesne won that one. Batted up by Tangay, gets it to McGinley. Going to be a penalty on the Rangers. As McGinley was up in as he came towards the Rangers zone. So the Avalanche will get the first power play opportunity of the game. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I think we're again like, just kind of stepped on the stick right there. But, man, it goes down the avalanche, get a power play, Mike. And it's, it's got, like, it's gotten to the situation now where it's difficult to talk to the guys about the power play because it's just, it's been so frustrating. And if there is one area, just one area where the avalanche, if it, it became good, would change everything, it is the power play for the avalanche. See if they can get it done. The Avalanche get their first power play opportunity, and if they score, a lucky winner will get an Avalanche ticket to an upcoming game, courtesy of American Lifestyle Furniture. And if you'd like a chance to win, register at afwonline.com slash altitude. Landeskog, McKinnon, Aginla, Barry, and O'Reilly are the five out for the Avalanche. Four forwards. Shot and miss by O'Reilly. Four forwards and a defenseman, Tyson Barry. Out for the abs on this power play. Scoreless first period. Shot and it goes off of Talbot. And the puck is out of play. And, you know, we've seen it a couple times in the last couple games for the Colorado Avalanche. The idea that if you hold on to it, you know what, shoot it. If, if you're going to come out of the corner right here, right McKinnon, right here. And what it, the one thing about shooting, everybody's shooting the puck, like everybody knows that's going to happen. So then you, you see McKinnon, then you drive the net. There's bodies going to the net, the bodies going to the right place. Klein moves the puck to Nash, and he uses his uh, strength to be able to shoot that puck down the ice. Back into the avalanche end. Redmond finds Holden. He's being harassed as he comes out from behind the net. Makes the pass, though, for Alex Tanguay. 50 seconds remaining in the stall penalty. Tipped away by Nash. The puck rolling ever so slowly towards Varlamov. To steer the puck for Nick Holden to take. Comes through the middle. Dumps the puck to the corner. 
Redmond hustling in. Squashed in the corner. And the puck comes free for Hayes. He turns, finds an opening, and shoots it towards Barlamov. After it bounces away from him, out the field the puck. And so far with one shot during this power play opportunity, 15 seconds remaining in stalls penalty. Tyson Barry will try his uh, lucky getting through. Gets over the line, makes the pass towards Talbot. Puck comes free, side of the net, still loose. Banging around, there's a chance, but it's taken away. Now the box to stall. And the puck brought up the ice by Zuccarello. He shoots! And that one got through and glanced off the uh, shoulder of goaltender Semyon Barlamo. Hunwick chasing the puck. Couldn't ship it out. Mitchell blocked it along the boards. Behind the net, Max Talbot of the Avalanche. A little help from Cody McLeod. And with the puck free, but it comes to the Rangers. Quick little soft pass. And Zuccarello ahead for Hunwick. Dumped in, wobbling out of bounds. And Barlomov had to be uh, pretty sure there, because that took a... Uh, one of those one hoppers on him, but he makes the stop, and we'll be back with more play in the first period. No score. All right, let's see who was in the groove. Brought to you by Groove Subaru and Rick Nash. I, I remember when he first came in the Lake Peter, you said, this is, this is one of my favorite players to watch when he was with Columbus. Yeah, and, and then last year, uh, well, what a year. I mean, he had a concussion, and that slowed him down. He did have 26 goals, I believe, during the regular season. But I've never struggled with a guy watching a guy night in, night out, like I did with Rick Nash in the, in the actual playoffs and then the finals. He had three goals in 25 games. And, you know, I talked about in the pregame show, for a guy at 30 years old to now be having a career year, there are only a handful of guys that have ever done that in their career. Let's not forget he had 41 goals one year. He's done a pace for 52 goals this year. Run through center right. Now he did not get a point, and of course it did not score a goal against the Avalanche when they met earlier this season. A game in which uh, the Avs won on November 13th, 4-3 in a shootout in New York. No score in this game, a long shot by McKinnon. Dropped down by Cam Talbot, the goaltender for the New York Rangers, making his fifth consecutive start. He replaces the injured Henrik Lundqvist. Backhand along the end wall. Hayes after the puck for New York. Pass up the middle. Carried out to center ice. And then uh, Mark Stahl shoot the puck in to the Avalanche end. Or Lomlock turns over towards Hayda. Send it back towards Duchesne. Mike, Mike, at least early in this game, what Patrick Waugh is doing is he... Duchesne shoots! By Talbot. And he covers the rebound. We've got 11 forwards. And that means there's four sets of wingers, and we're seeing Duchesne, O'Reilly, and Mitchell sort of rotating with who's ever up next. We saw Duchesne on that last shift out with Landeskog and McKinnon. Now, he's usually out there with Tange and Aguila, and now he is... You see him coming, you see Talbot moving to center ice, and he's getting some time at center ice. So there's just going to be all kinds of different guys being used at the center position when they out of the lineup, 11 forwards, Mike. I don't think for the Avalanche that it's a real handicap because the guys we're talking about are all young guys. And McKinnon took a shift at center. Duchesne just loved to play more. Right. O'Reilly's the same situation. So I think that for Patrick Wise, it's just going to be mixing and matching on that fourth line. Yeah, right now, it's a tablet with Everberg and Breyer. Klein moves the puck. Chased by Stepniak. Can't get to it. And keep it in the Ranger zone. Breer pushed against the boards. Stays up on his skates. Moves the puck one-handed along the end boards. Dominic rides at the half boards. Everberg staying with him. Pass comes free for Clyde. Out the pass and it's carried up the middle. Zone that by Andrew Glass. Dumped it in to the Avalanche. Whipped around for Everberg to take. Blocked by Boyle, but then another chance for Everberg. Got the puck to center. Stepping up, Dominic Moore. And a cross-ice pass for the veteran Dan Boyle. Back into his own zone. Back to Boyle, off the boards. And shift ahead by Zuccarello. That's blocked by Hayda. Finds Mitchell. He's into the zone. And the puck skitters into the corner. Nash gave it away to Duchesne. Pass 
in front for Mitchell slipped away. Broussard. Pass up ice and at the center. Broken up. Duchesne again with the puck. Had a couple of good shots in this game already. And Duchesne looks like he's skating well in this first period. 5.40 to go. No score. 11 shots for the Rangers. Four for the Avalanche. And a couple of those came on the power play. Cucarello tied up by Duchesne. Fights him off and still has the puck. Coming in on the off wing. Backhand uh, pass is tipped by Gennon. And the puck floats out of play. From Pepsi Center in Denver, no score in the first period. You know, it's interesting, you know, just sort of looking at some of the numbers for the Rock of Richard Trophy. And Ovechkin's won it four times. Neville Burry's won it twice. And Jerome McGinley is the only other player that's won it multiple times. He's won it twice. And center right, San Luis makes the handoff. And right now, again, look, leading the Avalanche in uh, goals. He's got 16 this season. Right. The puck into the avalanche though. So. Well, we've got five minutes to go in the first period. No score. Lifted in by McKinnon. McDonough collides with McKinnon. McKinnon fights him off, centered out in front. And it's pushed away, and Stepan moves out to center ice. Rims it around. And St. Louis waiting at the half boards with the puck. Shoots to cross. It got tipped high in the air. Knocked down. Shot to the net. Glove save made by Varlamov. Nowhere to go with it. So we'll have a face off in the Colorado zone. And Mike, let's look at this year's Rocket Richard Trophy race. And you know, it's, it's one of those things, Mike, where you look at Nash and Ovechkin. They now have a four goal lead over Tyler Sagan, Mike. Both in the same division. Obviously, Rangers and Washington Capitals in the same Metro division, and it's going to be a battle. It's going to be interesting. My money is on Ovechkin, but I think Nash has had the better year. Not that Ovechkin has not had a good year, but I just think Nash has been phenomenal in, in what he's done for this Ranger club. McDevitt has the puck. He's in. He shoots and misses the net. Good rush there for Colorado. It's been a couple of good shifts, Peter, from this line. Last time they were out. They had a good strong shift in the Rangers zone and they just had a chance there. Aside from not scoring, Talbot may have been the most impressive avalanche their last game last in, in, in Winnipeg. Back to the point, Klein. Shot. Blocked in front of the net. Played up and not out of the zone though by the avalanche. Driven back behind the cage. Hayden sends it high. Boyle flanked it down. Stays with it. Kept in by the Rangers. Miller hand off to Hayes pulls up in the slot shot. I think it hit his teammate Miller in the skate and went wide. Off the glass and out. Cross ice for Hayes. Abs get caught on the chain. Boyle scores. What a move by Dan Boyle as the Abs got caught in a change and uh, that gave the Rangers an opportunity and uh, Dan Boyle walks in and gets his eighth of the season. You know, what happened on the line change there? Well, it, it's just a bad one. I mean, you're heading to the net one before the puck is it clearly, I'm looking, the avalanche are heading up, and all of a sudden, little turnover, four guys are going before anybody comes onto the ice. But give Hayes credit. What a nice pass. He waited, he saw Boyle, he threw it underneath the stick. Just a perfect little pass. Like, Hayes is an interesting guy. He was originally drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks because of those little, you know, a, a, wrinkle in the players association he was able to become a free agent playing played last year at boston college great career he was a complete free agent a lot of teams want him he's a big center iceman nice play right there deep scoring summary shows you that dan boyle the veteran defenseman getting his eighth of the year at 16 to 30 kevin hayes ryan mcdonough with the assists and boy hayes made a nice play but well, peter we've seen uh, in those situations for Walmart, Times out of ten, he makes the save. But what a that was a pretty move by a defenseman coming in all alone on the goaltender. They get the goal. Obviously, pretty long, yeah, long time Tampa Bay, a long time San Jose Shark. Signed as a free agent this year with the New York Rangers, and he's been good. That's eight goals so far this season, and you know he, he's just been that better leader for this club. Well, it's one nothing for the Rangers. Tyson Barry turns and shoots, and a tip sends the puck out of play. 
Well, you, you know, when you look at that Metro division, Mike, it is something that, you know, right now the New York Rangers are the wild card club in that Eastern Conference. They're four points ahead of Boston. They're in the eighth spot, Boston. The New York Rangers in the seventh spot. But, Mike, they're only four points away from first place in the New York Islanders, and they have games in hand on all the clubs that are ahead of them. It is interesting. You, your philosophy instead of looking behind you. Yep. And you got to think. It's such a different scenario in the East, Peter. The Florida Panthers, right now, tonight are playing and losing to the Wild 2 1 in the second period. I think that's the only team. It's, a, it's, a, it's the only team that has a chance outside the top eight right now to get in, right? Oh, yeah. And, and, they, may, and they may only be chasing the Boston Bruins. Right. The Rangers, you know. Rick is a good club, Mike. After a, a somewhat slow first 25, they're 20 wins and six losses in one tie in the last 27. Well, th their key is going to be how good does Talbot play? And if they play like this defensively, you can see what they're doing. The first thought for every one of these New York Rangers is defense. They they turn to come back even when there's a smallest little turnover in the avalanche off, you know, in the defensive zone. They're not pushing it. They're not doing anything. They're getting three guys back immediately. They've only given up four shots in the period. Couple by Matt Duchesne as the abs are offside coming into the New York zone. And here is something that's really impressive for the New York Rangers. They have been the NHL's best first period team. So look at their plus 20 now. Coming into the game today, obviously plus 19, plus 20. And Mike, they've gotten off to great starts this season. And, and when we come into the third period, whatever the game is, we'll give you a number that is absolutely staggering about the New York Rangers. Right around the board, slowed up behind the net by Talbot. Give you a hint, you don't want to be behind in the third period. It's not the place to be. Step on. The puck wide of the net. Tip back towards Step on. Comes out in front in the slot and it dribbles out the center. Ryan McDonough right back into the Colorado zone. Approaching one minute left in the period. Rangers leading at one. Out of center ice, Klein handles the puck, but gave it away to Haven. He loses it. Taken by St. Louis. His shot tipped by Elliott and wide of the net. Tipped it away. Landis Gaga reached back and took it. Passed out to center ice for McKinnon. McKinnon wide shoots. Talbot able to make the save. St. Louis passed back into his own zone with 35 seconds to go in the period. Lost to Klein. Rank wide through the neutral zone. Rick Nash shoots it towards the corner. It was tipped. Up the board. Back up the wing. Put behind the net by Alex Tangay of the Avalanche. 15 seconds to go in the period. Played off the glass. Not out of the zone. Short. Hound it by Broussard. Broussard again with the puck. Wheels it around. Five seconds to go in the period. Tangay. Hand off to Shane. One last chance. There it is. Head high on Talbot. It makes the glove save. So a line change that didn't go the way the ads wanted to. It cost them a goal as Dan Boyle has made it 1-0 Rangers after one. And we got a pretty good look at why the New York Rangers have been red hot, Mike. After yep. that so-so start, they went the next 14 games. They went 13-1. And, and they've been a little more pedestrian in the last little while. 7-5-1 and one, their last 13. But good period of hockey by the New York Rangers. They were strong in all three zones for sure. Outshot the Avs 13 to 5 and had the only goal of the first period. Dan Boyle getting it at 16:30. One nothing Avs. Stay tuned for the Toyota intermission and report. Rangers get a goal late in the first period, scored by Dan Boyle, and lead the Avalanche one nothing after one period of play. Well, for the Avalanche, they got a little work to do in the second period and perhaps even in the third uh, to get to a couple of points as the Avs need to get on a streak. They need to put together a long winning streak if they want to be in the playoff picture. Yeah, there's 28 games remaining, including tonight for the Colorado Avalanche. And at some point inside of it, Mike, they're going to have one of those 10-game runs. You I mean, look at Minnesota did. Minnesota was not even being considered a playoff club. Now they're, they're in ninth spot, and they're flying. You look at Calgary. Calgary had an awful run in December. Well, they've turned that around, and they've had a real nice run the last 10 games. That's what the Avalanche need. Like, they'll need a 10-game run 
where they get 16, 17, 18 points if you want to get back in it. Because when the Avalanche crawled all the way to ninth spot, like, what was the one real positive about being in that position? You're chasing down one team. You, 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 whether it was Calgary, whether it was Vancouver, it didn't matter. You were chasing just one club. Now they have to get by four clubs. They have to have hope that four clubs all fall back and don't play as well as the Avalanche do over the course of the last 28 games. So it's, it's going to be very interesting and a real challenge for this group of Colorado Avalanche players. But it starts tonight with a four-game homestand. And the Avs have been good at home late. And now they did lose that uh, last game against the Detroit Red Wings. But previous to that, Peter, this is a team that it made it a difficult place for opponents to come in and win. Oh, and, and, and it has to be that again. Yep. And it starts in goal with Semi Barlamov. He has been terrific. And they have scored some timely goals here at home. And, you know, the, I mean, they, they need to come out of this period at least even with the New York Rangers because, as I said, the Rangers, and you mentioned it, Mike, when we give you the numbers, it, it's epic numbers for the Rangers. Zuccarello pass back to the point, shot wide of the net, and ball against the. Uh, Backwards, then the side of the cage. O'Reilly sends it off the glass to center ice. Klein steps up, protects the puck. Back into the avalanche end. It's a 13 to 5 shot advantage after the first period for the Rangers. They got one by uh, Semyon Varlamov. And lead this game 1 0. As did have the only power play chance during the period. Long pass from center brought in. That shot. By Kreider goes wide. St. Louis catches up to the puck, drops it along the boards. Already shot and looking perhaps for a tip from Chris Kreider, but love save made by Varlamov. Let's look at the numbers for the Colorado Avalanche here at home over the course of the last 12 games. Eight, three, and one goals, four goals against. You know, the power play goals, Mike, it, it, it has been a struggle. The Avalanche, it's it just five on four, four situations this year. Got 18. And, and you know it, it's it, again that that situation of one thing one thing for, I mean, only for the avalanche got better that power play would do so much 0 for one tonight in that category as the puck is played into the ranger bench out of play more of a face off at center ice one thing about these new york rangers like you know it, it, i don't know if it was a Stanley Cup hangover, but they started off the first 25 games. They were 11, 10, and 4. They were one game over 500, and that's certainly not good enough numbers to make the playoffs. But, you know, now they're flying. So, you know, it looks like, you know, they're going to be one of those clubs again in the hunt in the East. They went to the Eastern uh, Conference Final, won that, went to the Stanley Cup. And ultimately a loss to uh, the Los Angeles Kings. And well, they had several games, Peter. They went to overtime. They had won that. The Kings were they were running out of gas. Oh, they were the Rangers. They won a couple of those overtime games. They may have won that Stanley Cup. Oh, there's there's no question that they were they were oh so close. Hayes moves in. What a move and what a goal! Kevin Hayes walks in and scores to make it two to nothing. He's made a brilliant pass, and he just made a brilliant goal. And the Ranger fans here are very happy. Their team leading 2 nothing. Boy, was that, Mike, has this first 22 minutes of this period not shown you why he was so highly coveted by so many clubs? The Avalanche got involved for him. But, Mike, when you watch this right there, Mike, this is a 6'5", 225-pound, 22-year-old guy. I mean, in his first year, and apparently he's talking to the Rangers, like, he hit the wall right around game four. Well, that's sort of that college wall, but he has turned it around and really figured it out. And they've been really impressed that he has not stayed sort of in that slump. And the last while, he's been playing really good hockey again. He's not slumping the night. No, we picked the wrong time to talk to him. Here's the uh, Kia scoring summary. Kevin A is doing it. At 147, all by himself, unassisted goal. That'll be one. That'll be on the highlights yeah. tonight. And, and that's one of those goals for the Rangers, Mikey. There's a big difference between San Luis and Rick Nash as far as there's 14 goals difference between your top score and your second score. But 
they've been doing a really good job with the, a sort of a group of guys moving up, scoring goals. Arlovov sets it behind the net. Gibson Stewart shifts around. Dunham puts it in the corner. Broussard wheels it around the boards. Scooped up, carried back out to center. Broussard over the line with the puck. Smashes it behind the net. Stewart cut it off for the abs. Kept in though by New York. Broussard outraces everybody to the puck. Squeezed along the wall. Zuccarello back to the point. Behind the slot for McDonough. His shot deflects off of Beginla. Zuccarello. Pass behind the net for Broussard. Centers high in the slot. Held in at the blue line by the Rangers. Kreider. Pass behind the net for Broussard. Back behind the net. To the corner. Zuccarello. After it. His pass. Got away. Quick pass and a breakaway chance for Aguila. Shoot saved by Talbot and he covers. Well, there's the best chance of the game for the Avalanche. Your leading scorer, Jerome McGinla, lots of time on a breakaway, and Cam Talbot makes the save. Well, the Avalanche were, like, you know, it was getting almost to a dangerous point in the Avalanche zone as far as it just looked like inevitable that Rangers were going to get something going, and all of a sudden, a quick turnover, McGinla bursts out of the zone, and his buddy Tanky finds it perfectly. There's one of the ones for Talbot. I mean, that's a statement save right there. That's one you can look over the bench and say, guys, I'll give you this. Puck chipped into the avalanche bench, then dropped down on the ice, but the puck had gone out of play. And for Jerome McKinnell, like, interesting little number, 21-18. That's how many minutes he played last game against Winnipeg. That's the most he's played in the game this season for the Colorado Avalanche. And, you know, with the goals that he has this year, he sits one goal behind Mark Recchi for 19th all time. And center ice, Rangers moving in again. Ryder. To the corner, centering pass. Here's a chance, and it was tipped by O'Reilly. Back along the board, step on. Put it behind the net for Kreider. His pass back to the point. All the way back into the New York zone. Talbot. Got a pass off the boards. Center ice. Carried ahead by Stahl. Got some players going down the middle. Pass. Taken back by the abs of Landeskog. McKinnon has the puck for Colorado. Pass over towards Zach Redmond, abs defenseman, to the red line. Pass for Talbot. Tipped into the Ranger zone. Hayes. From the story tonight for New York. Steele made. Chance. That's blocked, another chance, and it's taken away by Hanglin. Skates out to center ice. Cuts in over the line. Shoots, and the glove save made by Varlamov. Well, Talbot's made that big save at the other end, Mike. It, you know, it, he's a goaltender, Mike, that wouldn't be playing in this game. This is not his, this wouldn't be a schedule game. So these are important games for the management and the coaches to watch him. He played in Toronto the other night, which he might have got because it's a stat strip. Everyone gets the game. Wasn't great in that game, they, but they win 5-4. And usually you come back to Lundqvist. Lundqvist would play this one. They'd play in Arizona. Then against the Islanders, but would have played his 1-4. and four. Now he's scheduled to play the ball. He becomes the number one, and the mentality changes. Because you're that guy every night, no matter what happens. You're going back in. The backup goaltender is Mackenzie Skapsky. I'll show you, Peter, how, you, how you're aging. He was born the day after the Rangers won the Stanley Cup in 1994. And, and you're, you're staying the same. Exactly. That's, you're, you're quite a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you found the verbal <laughs> fountain of youth. With the bucket center, Stephen Elliott. Shoots the puck in. Out behind the net by Talbot. Long pass at center. Nash had a dribble away from him. Knocked down a pass by Barry. Steals it away. Babs get it back. Tange to Tyson Barry. Back to Alex Tange. Quick pass for Duchesne. Pulls up. Nice pass. Shot. Whistle wide. And another chance for Aguila. 
Shot by Barry, misses the net. Zuccarello bounced it, didn't get it out. Shot by Tank, and a tip in front by Duchesne. The puck goes whizzing wide. Back in along the end boards and into the corner. Fly. Shot out to center ice, bounced off a body, comes to Rick Nash. Flip to the head, Zuccarello into the zone. He shoots. That one went off of a, they get it, pass behind the net for Derek Broussard. Turns and shoots a pass across the low slot. Hunwick had pinched in, pass stolen away by Kreider. Tangles up, loses the puck. Pass by uh, Tangay, whipped around the boards. Steal made by Stepan. He shoots, knocked down by St. Louis, teammate. Stepan got it again, passing the slot for Hunwick. Couldn't get a shot away. Ginla getting it up ice for Duchesne. Bounces back into the Rangers zone. Boyle scored the first goal of the game. Pass hit McLeod. Got it back. Stepping up. Holding. Comes into the Rangers zone. Stripped to the puck. Pass to center. Kreider. Connect with uh, St. Louis. He was skating away from the puck. Yeah, St. Louis, St. Louis, Mike, he just turned away the last second. That was actually going to be a really dangerous play. Marlamov slows the puck down behind the net. Stewart looking for that long pass. Over shoots McLeod, but no icing on the play. Talbot shoots the puck around over the Rangers. Hagelin takes a hold of the puck. Pass up for Hayes. The third team has done some damage tonight against the Avs. Puck stolen away by New York. Hanklin's pass. Whipped around. Kept in by New York. Hanklin was in the corner. And a dart around Redmond. Moves behind the Colorado net. Reverses. Comes out in front. Turns. Pass in front. Off of Miller. Teammate. Hayes is staying with him. Pass to the corner for Hagelin. Back to the point. Intercepted by Landeskog. Skates in. Landeskog. Right behind the net. 11.20 to go in the second period. Pass to Hayes. Push to the head. Nice and Barry picking up speed through the neutral zone. Coming in wide. Put up by McDonough. Grabs the puck. Lost it back to Barry. Threw it out in front. He accidentally turned the goal line. <laughs> Miller back into the puck to center. Again, he got it back for Colorado. Steel made. Dominic Moore's got it, but it's called a hand pass. And that has stopped the action here in the second period. It's 2 0 New York over Colorado. It is time for our Coors Timeless Moments. Well, Mike, one of the reasons you can see us timeless, no names in the back of the jerseys. <laughs> Not many helmets. But we're talking about the gag line, one of the great nicknames for a line. Vic Hadfield on the left side, Jean Rattel in the middle, Roger Bear on that right side, Mike, and they were magnificent. I had the unbelievable opportunity of playing with Mr. Rattel in Boston. As far as players that I played with, the nicest gentleman I ever got an opportunity to play with. He was class personified, and it was the one guy on, the, on that Bruin club that you couldn't hit. You couldn't, you couldn't hit him dirty. If you did, they were six deep. They were going to kick you so hard, so far, they'd wait at the penalty box. Oh, they would. <laughs> they would wait at the penalty box and take that man down. I mean, if they hit me, the guy just laughed. They'd be like, ah, Max, he's down again, you know? It's no big, you know, because everyone could, you know, basically hit him. But Ratty was not going to face that. If you wanted to hit him, it was a night from heaven playing against the Bruins. And, they, and these guys were relentless. Oh. Well, all right. I was a 10, 12-year-old boy. All I cared about that time was watching the hockey. Man, they, they were so good. So much fun to watch. Well, Gilbert was the goal scorer with a great flash. Gilbert, I mean, Hatfield would go to the front of that, and he was me. And then Ratty could find any pass, any time that you wanted to. It was just, it was a super line. Maybe the best club that never won a Stanley Cup. Next to the door. <laughs> Zuccarello dropped it for Nash. And he's pulled away from the puck. Had to get it back for air. And back ahead. Bernie against Duchesne. Duchesne intercepts from his knees. Popped right back up. 
He's really been skating well in this game. With the puck. Back towards the tank egg, to the corner and behind the net. Girardi flipped it around, cut off. Tank egg threw it across. One out the center ice by Nash to the red line. Zipped in wide. Shot by Broussard. Dropped in the corner. Back to the point. Klein. Nine, ten remaining in the period. Behind the net. Puck will roll around into the corner. St. Louis cut off. Redmond got it back. Two nothing Rangers. They're out shooting the Avs 18 to 7. Stefan with the puck. Moves in. Top of the circle. Shoots. Off the uh, chest of uh, Barlamov. Stefan got it back. To the point for Klein. Tees it up. He shoots. It flex. And the Avs move to center. And in the rush is Gabe Landeskog. Cuts in. He shoots. Stopped by Talbot. And uh, Landeskog trying to follow up. Barry's got the loose puck. Pulls up. He shoots. Loose puck. Landeskog still up on his skates. Whipped it down into the corner. Back to the point. McKinnon, far side shot, and it hits a body and goes wide. O'Reilly staying with it for the Avalanche. Good effort on this shift for Colorado. O'Reilly turns, shoots, had a block, pass in front, get back to the boards. What an effort on this shift for Colorado. Landeskog to O'Reilly. Landeskog got it again. Wow! Get a shot for the far side by McKinnon. Goes off, goes off the heel of his stick. And it's turned and it not out. Kept in by the Avs momentarily. And it's shipped not out on that clear by the Rangers. What a shift here from behind the net. Here's a chance and it hopped over the stick of Tyson Barry. Avs keep it alive. Into the corner for McKinnon. You can feel it coming for the Avalanche. They continue with the pressure in the Rangers' own shot. Score! You just knew it was coming. What a shift. And a tip in front by Landeskog. And the Avalanche have broken the ice on Gabe Landeskog's 11th of the season. That was a shift for the ages. Mike, that's the best shift they've had in 15 games. That, I mean, everything was poisoned the Ranger way. And then all of a sudden, Landeskog, as the shift was going down, comes down that right side, and that's where it started. Everything, everything just kept working for the Avalanche. Twice it looked like the Rangers clearly had the puck. It looked like they wanted to ice it, but the Avalanche were able to keep it in, and finally, they chipped one in, and the place, like, the, and one of the real good things about it, the crowd was going crazy as this is going on, so now all of a sudden the crowd's into it. Oh, they uh, No, I did not see anything, but are they reviewing they're this? They're reviewing this. Are they saying it possibly went off his his leg? Well, the Avalanche Peter before that shift had had just seven shots in the game. They had four on that shift. But, but there might not only did they have four, but there was an, there was energy mm -hmm. on all of the shots on goal. Now let's have a look. McKinnon throws it on net. Landis God comes across. Oh, it bounced off Mike. I imagine, Mike, are they looking at it? Did it hit his hand? You know, did he punch it into the net, in other words? It did chip up high and... Uh, Boy, this is this is just huge here. You take oh this away, it's devastating. You give this to the Avalanche and there's new life. It's a great feeling in the building. Big moment here. No, it, 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 it's yeah, it's that from that angle it, it tells you nothing. You know, he here's the best angle we have right here. Watch and see as he goes into slow motion. Did this hit his hand? I, like now they they signal goal. That's the one thing going for the Avalanche, and I don't see anything from any of the you know the looks that we've had that would indicate that it would have to have been the top hand punches the puck into the net. And the puck comes across. Maybe this would be a different angle. Again, I think we, you know, unfortunately, just a split second after, 
But you saw the Ranger defenseman. What? He just can't tell, Peter. Clearly, here's the uh, indication from the referee. It's going to be inconclusive. After the, field, the, the call on the ice stand, we got a good goal. Yeah, well, it does count. And Landis Scott gets credit for the goal. And the Avalanche have cut the lead in half. And now it's a two to one hockey game. And there's Mike, what we've been talking about. It looks like the Rangers, we talked, Mike, and you've touched upon this so many times. Semyon Varlama, it's 2 0. It gets to 3 0. Forget. It's, you know, there's, it's just too many things aren't going well for the Avalanche. They, but it was a two goal. And Vardy kept it at two goals. And it was still at two goals. And now it's one goal, not just because of Semyon. Miller steals the puck. He shoots. And there's the key save by Varlama. Time to go. 12 minutes, 46 seconds. Puck kicks out to center. Steal made by Max Talbot. Shift in the corner. Now we can see if the Avalanche can use that shift and that goal to get something going. As we show you our IKEA scoring summary. 11th of the season with Landis Scott, John Mitchell, Nathan McKinnon with the assists. Coming at 12.46 in the Avalanche. Are now in the game. All right, let's look at our Lexus on the ice, and this shift for the Avalanche has led to the Atlanta Scott goal. Well, it was just building it. You could just feel the Rangers that were on the edge, but they were exhausted. They were getting beaten to every puck. The Avalanche were out fighting them, out working them twice. The, the Avs did a great job of keeping the puck in the zone. And right now, everything. Here we go. This is it. Now the Avs are, are cranked up. The crowd's going. They got a power play. They get a, yep. That's the key. Right off the drop, get a quick whistle to redo the face off the penalty. Called on uh, JT Miller of the New York Rangers. A hooking penalty at 13.22, and second power play chance in this game. Rangers win the face off. New York penalty, number 10, JT Miller. Oh, another penalty. Here comes a five on three for the Avalanche. What an opportunity here for the Avs to tie this game up. It's going to be a five on three for a minute and 53 seconds. Here it is. Yeah, but, you know, base, basically, you're, you're full two minutes. By the time the other guy gets back into the play, Mike, it'll be a two minute five on three. And you talk about a momentum moment in a hockey game. 6.30, you're coming off a huge goal that, that just ignited the crowd. The bench was going crazy. They were all standing up in Atlanta Scott's court. I mean, listen to him now. I mean, this is, this is where somebody's got to score a goal. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. This is a, what a swing in the game. Barry with the puck. Down low for O'Reilly. Five on three for the Avs. Barry blasts one and missed. Back up the wall. They get him. Far side circle for McKinnon. Inching his way in past O'Reilly. Shoots and it hits Talbot. Anglin took it in the glove. Dropped down to the ice. Scrambled for the puck. Goes up the boards. Barry put it to the side of the net. They gonna had it for a moment. Comes free up the boards. And the clear attempt did not get out of the zone. I continue to say the Avalanche is just simply one of the best teams in the league at keeping the puck in the zone. And the point again to Tyson Barry. One minute left in this five on three. Barry shoots. And it's still free. They came loose. Back towards the high slot for Tyson Barrett. Over towards the Gimlin. Back towards the point. Chipped out the center ice. And the puck will roll into the end zone. 40 seconds to go. In the five on three. Barrett. Hand off to Shea. To Nick Holden. And changing up. Puck tipped to the corner by Stahl. Tangles up behind the net. Breer. Rips the puck free. Pass towards the point. Holden. Down low for Duchesne. Back towards the point. A tip. Sends the puck to center. 15 seconds left in the Miller penalty. Carried in by Redmond. Pass back across for Briere. To the point for Holden. Finds Redmond. Time winding down. Here's a chance for Duchesne. Center. Good! 
save made. The penalty on Miller is over and just four seconds remaining on the Girardi penalty. Well, Mike, it looks like the Avalanche are going to end up this minute 53 second. Or it was a minute 53 seconds because the first guy to one shot on goal. It, it, the frustration on this power play just continues to, to mount. And you, you felt the whole crowd. Like, went, went from there on, on their feet to there's some, you know, di a different feeling now at the end of this. Now, Girardi's got to come across the red line yeah. to get in. But the Rangers win the faceoff. And the puck kicks free. Eglin sends the puck high in the air, out to center ice. Girardi has the puck, threw it out in front. And the, obviously the penalty is over. And so the Avalanche 0 for 3 tonight. No shots on that last second. And just the, the one on the 5 on 3. That's it. That's all they managed in that situation. Pass to center ice for Nash. To the red line. Pulls up. Pass down the slot. Zuccarello scores. What a turn. You go from a five on three for almost two minutes. And then uh, right after it is killed, Zuccarello comes in and uh, fires a BB into the top half of the net, Peter. And it's 3 1 Ranger. You talk about a swing in the game. Like, it, it's like, you know, not to overstate it, but like, you can almost physically feel it. I mean, there they were, the Avalanche. Great goal. I mean, great effort. And now you get a five on three, and you get a shot. And then Zuccarello, what a great shot, great pass, great, you know, everything about it was a good goal. He's now got a seven game point streak. That's four goals, five assists, nine points. But, I mean, just the energy that, like, it's like they opened the doors and it just swooshed out of the building. And the roof would have come off this scene if they scored five on three. And then maybe and have done it early and got another power play goal. Uh, the roof would have come off of here. Absolutely, because the Rangers are one of those clubs, Mike, they travel well. They're like the Blackhawks and the Red Wings. So there's lots of fans here to hate. And so you're you're almost cheering just to upset the Rangers. Like, yeah, because the Rangers fans, they've had a little, let's go, Rangers, let's go. That stupid thing that they say, you know, 18,000 New York fans. <laughs> Says former New Jersey Devil Peter McKenna. Yeah. All right, I want to tell you, visit your Colorado Kia dealers and uh, discover Kia's full lineup of high-quality, stylish, dependable vehicles. Go to ColoradoKiaDealers.com to learn more. Zuccarello is, is it, Mike, he's one of those great stories that can only happen, doesn't happen in many other sports. He's 5'7", 175 pounds. And he is, he's a pick up as a free agent. He's a Norwegian kid, which makes it very special to my mother. <laughs> which she doesn't really know about. Something she always wanted. <laughs> he, has, he can skate and play hockey. Well, he just said it, it was a pretty goal. Nice pass from Nash. He set it up. Shot from the point. Gets blocked in front. Chase to the corner. McKinnon for the avalanche. Hand off. Barry. Comes to the corner. Chase the puck along the board. It's a hit by Kreider. And the puck freed up. And St. Louis tapped out the center ice. Steal at center. Backhanded ahead to by Stepak. Punched around. Landeskog has got the avalanche goal. Handles the puck. Pass across the far circle for Tyson Berry. Whipped around, Zuccarello hustles. Going to keep the puck in play. Stolen back at center ice by New York. Zuccarello shoots it in. Stopped behind on it by Varlamo. Hand off in the corner. Broussard back up the board to the point. Ryan McDonough takes the shot. Zuccarello pass is cut off. Nash has got it. Dropped it behind him. Girardi. Behind the net for Sharp, but it with his skate. Hooked around to Everburn for the abs. Two minutes to go in the second period. Lifted in, charging down the boards. Everburn, Tangay's in front of the net. Pass comes around the board. Shot by Redmond, deflected. Girardi keeps it around the boards. Hagler got there first. He gets tangled up. Everburn got knocked down by Girardi. And the puck travels back into the Colorado end. 3-1 for New York. 
Deal made by Miller, and the puck pops out to center. Delay penalty on the end. Rangers going to get their first power play opportunity of the game. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. Rangers with the man advantage. Zuccarello with the goal, making a 3-1 New York. These lucky fans upgraded from the Ram Trucks Fan Zone to lower bowl seats courtesy of Ram Trucks. You can purchase tickets in Section 362 for your chance to win. Upgrade to the official truck of your Colorado Avalanche. I imagine we look at the penalty against the Colorado Avalanche, Mike. I think it's a good time to give you that number for the New York Rangers. In the last, like, 148 times that they have led into the third period. The New York Ranger record is 137 wins, one loss, and nine overtime losses. One loss in the last 148 times. So, it, you know, it, it's, uh, that's, that, that is an absolutely a phenomenal record. Power play chance for the Rangers. Their first of the game. One minute remaining in the period. Mike Redmond in the penalty box. Zuccarello with the puck. Rangers are offside. It was an interesting play. I think some fans might be thinking, why was that offside? Nash had his rear end on the line. He didn't have his skate. And so when he was falling down, his skates were over the line. But then as he was falling down, the puck crossed, and then he fell flat in his rear end. That's a minute remaining in the period. Rangers begin their breakup. Ryan McDonough gets into the neutral zone, pass behind him. And ahead, over the line, Nash. Got it. Nash with five power play goals along with St. Louis and Kreider leading the Rangers in that category. Step on. Slides the puck for eight. Rangers got some numbers going. Nash shoots off the left arm of Barlamo. Back in the corner. Nash again with the puck. To the point. McDonough, top of the circle. Ten seconds to go in the period. Shot wide. Slammed around and out. It looks like the Avs are going to get out of the period. There will be about 40 seconds left of power play time when the third period begins. Oh, what a turn. We saw one of the best shifts we've seen in a long time for the Avalanche. I mean, just a thrill for this crowd. And then they get a five on three for nearly two minutes. It just didn't work for the Avs. Uh, uh, you know, during a regular season game, I haven't seen many games that had, it was, it was Rangers were coming. Something's going to happen. Back. Well, then the Avalanche get that shift. And then it's back, and the emotion, the crowd, and then all of a sudden, boom, Zuccarello scored. Wow, what, what, what an interesting, emotional second period for the Avalanche. They find themselves trailing by two. The Rangers lead the game three to one. They got goals from Hayes and Zuccarello. For the Avs, Landeskog scored. Stay tuned for the Subaru Intermission Report. Colorado Avalanche. Hockey on Altitude is brought to you by Groove Subaru on Broadway or online at GrooveAuto.com. Anova, beat prostate cancer in five treatments and get back in the game. Pepsi, proud to be the official soft drink of the Colorado Avalanche. And by the Ford Fusion, offering the availability of all-wheel drive with big MPGs, smart technology, and unsurpassed quality. See what happens when fun meets the road. Ford, go further. Rangers have a little time left on their power play. They lead the game three to one. As we get set to start the third period, but Peter, you go back into that second period. There was a, a point in the time where this game changed. It was about a five minutes on the, on the clock where this game went from right there. The Avalanche were in trouble, and then all of a sudden, at the end of what seemed like about a minute and a half shift in the New York Rangers zone, it bounces off Landeskog's body, it was reviewed, it counts as a goal, and then all of a sudden, a minute 53 second five on three, and the Avalanche can't convert, and then bang, Mike, it just seemed the next shift. Zuccarello on a great pass from Nash, as pretty a shot as we've seen all, all season. I mean, he just blew it over Semyon Varlamov's shoulder and a game that looked like it was going to be 2-2 is 3-1. 
If they have scored in the third, you score with Subway. Go to your local Subway restaurant tomorrow for any regular six-inch sub for just $3 after three. 41 seconds of power play time for the Rangers as the period starts. They've had a couple of shots on this power play opportunity. Their first of the game, by the way. And the last 17 seconds as McDonough gets to the red line, comes to the puck in. Marlamov was to cover with 10 seconds remaining in the Zach Redmond penalty. I was talking to him, Mike, we, we talked about that number for the New York Rangers, and I was asking some of the Ranger people, I said, you know, well, what's the key? He said, well, a lot of times, you know, it has been Lundqvist and Ness, and he has proven to be so good. But the defenseman, we talked about that's the key to this hockey club. They play smart hockey, and they don't let you have those real good opportunities. And it's become a real sense of pride. This, this season alone, they're 23-0-1-1 when they have a lead going into the third period. A breakaway though tonight. The Gillies yep. had a breakaway. And eight when times. Score. Yep, and eight times the Avalanche have faced it being down by two and come back to at least get a point. Steel made in the corner. Power play, by the way, done for the Rangers. And uh, two shots. Can get anything going in that last 41 seconds once the third period began. And so the Avs killed the penalty. Shot. Knocked down the fire. a chance. Sent rebound. Still free. Bouncing around. What an opportunity there for Dennis Everberg. And long pass. Hit a skate. Holden breaks it up. Everberg has the puck. Skates away from St. Louis. Tyson Barry for Colorado. A minute and a half into the third period. Here's the pass for Duchesne. To McGinley. Back towards Duchesne. Overshoots into the pass for Duchesne. Chasing the puck to the corner. Stall got it back for New York. Being hounded by McLeod. Gave it away. Shot missed high by Duchesne. Center here's another opportunity. Barry shoots, but right into Talbot. Oh, what a chance there for Matt Duchesne. Mike, here's that solid defensive style that the New York Rangers have been playing. <laughs> they just threw it to Duchesne in front. And, you know, Mike, sometimes that. Sometimes it's one of those situations, like where you're just you're so surprised. Here's a chance earlier for Alex Tangay, but here's the steal. I mean, just come like right on his stick, and then Tyson Berry at the end of it comes in and he's got it. He's got to hit a bouncing puck a little bit. Talbot, nice save, moved up, made a good, real solid move on both of those shots. Start against O'Reilly for the faceoff. Back to the point, Barry. Back to the corner. Gannon shoots, saved by Talbot, covered by the New York Ranger goaltender. Luxury has an address. Cooney Lexus invites you to see the full line of Lexus all-weather drive sedans and luxury utility vehicles for 2015. They're available and Cody Lexus of Greenwood Village and Colorado Springs. Well, we continue to do the uh, scoreboard watching. Now know that the, the Minnesota Wild have won a game. They beat Florida. And so that gives the Wild now 61 yeah. points. And uh, we'll be watching the Calgary and Los Angeles game. The Kings have scored in the first period, lead that one one to nothing. I think everybody in hockey is just waiting for the L.A. Kings to sort of get their game together because they sit there right now. They won two in a row. Right? They won two in a row, and you know, like it, it's a club that everybody in the Western Conference, if you're in the playoffs, you want them out. The number one club you want out of the playoffs is the L.A. Kings, and the, along with the Chicago Blackhawks, but they're not going to miss because once the Kings get in, they get that, oh, yeah, we've seen everything. They know how to win. But the Avalanche here in this period have had now six shots on goal in the first three minutes and two seconds. So the Avalanche, at least they're throwing everything they can at Talbot. Absolutely, Mike. And their start, what they're starting to do is gain control, and the Rangers are backing off a little bit. They're not staying on it. And 
And all of a sudden, now the defensemen, we saw Barry last shift, we see Elliot on this shift. They're jumping up into the play. They're getting open because they're not picking up the far side guy. And the Avalanche might passing through the seams better in this third period than they have earlier in the game. Well, it, this has just been the recipe. We've seen this so often. The Avalanche, this is the fifth game in a row that they've gone to the third period trailing in the game. And the recipe has been then to just come on like gangbusters and try to tie it or win it. And then hope that, we've said this so many times, hope that the teams just go into that prevent defense and stop doing what they had been doing to get them the lead. Chance for Mitchell as he comes in. Pulls up. Nice dangling by Mitchell. And he's tied up along the boards. The puck still inside the blue line. Still inside the line. Mitchell and the puck are pushed into the neutral zone. And to have possession. Pass comes across for Stewart. Wrapped around the wall. Cut off by McDonough. And he get that pressure on. And get a hold of the puck in the neutral zone. They come right back in. They get lucky. The lines with Girardi. Puck travels around by Stewart. Put it behind the net for Duchesne. Again, look, scoops up the puck. Pass side of the net. Duchesne drops it behind for McLeod. Rangers take it away. Played off the glass. Get out. That should be icy. It will be. And just put pressure on from the start of this third period and another face off in the Rangers zone. And Patrick Watt mixing and matching lines. He's taking Tangay off the Duchesne and Gindler line. He's got McLeod on that line. So he is going with a different look here in this third period, except for this line, 92, 9, 90, and 29. Landis, Scott, O'Reilly, and McKinnon are staying together. You got Redmond and Barry paired up on defense. Win on the face off by Colorado. McKinnon. Into the corner with the puck. Back to the point for Redmond. Slid across for Barry. Shot. And uh, Talbot able to make the same. No rebound. Let's check in a rink side. Here's Julie Bremen. You guys talking about Patrick Wyatt. A lot to say to the media this morning. And one of them that he wanted to say is that, you know what? He's here. He's not here for the short term. He's here for the long term. He's here to win a Stanley Cup. He is still going to stay positive in his outlook. The team is not where he wants it to be. But it's a great opportunity right now to figure out what this team wants to achieve moving forward. Guys. Thank you, Julie. Landeskog has the puck for the Avalanche. And the Avs spending time in the Rangers zone. There's a chance in front, but a tip. And the opportunity wide. Tip down to center ice. Avs have got it. Pass behind the net for Barry. Redmond to Landeskog. Drags the puck into the blue line. Punch back out to center. One handed across by O'Reilly. For Redmond to take. Across the five minute mark. In the third period. Shot in up from center by O'Reilly. Talbot will set it for Stahl to take. Dabs making a line change. Mark Stahl finds Kevin Klein. Pass gets tipped in. Barlamov. The puck to the near side wall. Everbird. Patient. Looks to make a play. Flipped out towards center. Angling had it for a moment for the Rangers. Mitchell took it back, shoots it in, and a stop behind the net by Talbot. Felt a little pressure. Quick pass and a giveaway. Mitchell's got it. He turns, he shoots, and missed the net, then covered as it came off the end boards by Talbot. Well, the Rangers have been giving away the puck here in this third period. Well, let's look at the Western Conference right now with one big game remaining. The LA at home to Calgary, but Minnesota. Boy, I think what is that eight one and two now in the last eleven, and uh, as we saw, the Avalanche went in there. The Avalanche lost that one, one nothing. Oil had the only goal, but they played a good hockey game, Mike. They, they were, they were spot on in, in a lot of things, and they, they're getting healthy, and some guys are really starting to play. A Vanek, for example, starting to put the puck in the net a little bit. And Minnesota. Got that win. They beat Florida. That's a that's a tough loss for the uh, Panthers. They went in this one just down by four points. In the final playoff spot in the East. Yeah, it was a classic battle. Minnie was four points out in ninth spot. Florida was four points out in ninth spot. It did not turn into a three-point game. That was a regulation finish victory for Minnesota. Nashville did beat Winnipeg. 
It's center ice Duchesne picking up speed into the zone. With the puck around the boards. Stewart pinched in, threw it behind the net. Klein got it back to the Rangers. Makes the pass, St. Louis. Lost it here, the turnover shot, safe. Here's a chance. Go! Jerome Aginla taking advantage. Another turnover by the Rangers in their own zone, and the ads cash in. And here we go into the third period. We've seen this. Scenario before and the end down made it a one goal game with 13 17 to go great play by Stewart He was part of it then the avalanche might aggressive on the pitch again was coming in now Mike, Why is again there again was there supporting Stewart Stewart went down into the corner and then again went back and then he drove in Mike and I and I was talking about how well the Rangers this has been a sloppiest seven minute period stretch yep. of hockey as we've seen they've given the puck away no fewer than five times and now the avalanche you know here we go and as you said they have a history and you rely on that in these situations got in with center ice by the rangers rangers came in to this third period 3-1 lead and it's 3-2 the abs have scored though and you win with subway Back in and a save made by Talbot. A delay penalty coming up. Now go to your local Subway restaurant tomorrow for any regular six inch sub for $3 after three. Penalty on the Rangers after Jerome McGinley has scored. He has tied Mark Recchi for 19th place all time. Time for tonight's recap delivered to you by Jimmy Johns. First goal scored in the first period, Dan Boyle. 1-0 Rangers early into the second. Kevin Hayes, great play, makes it 2-0 Rangers, but then the Avalanche. Great shift, ends in a goal from Gabe Landeskog. Can't score on the five on three. Zuccarello makes it 3-1. Looks like that might have been it, but Rangers came out really making a lot of mistakes to start the third period. The Avs took advantage. And uh, get a goal from Jerome McGinley. The Avs have outshot the Rangers 10-0 in this third period. And terrible defensive play by the Rangers in their own zone. And set up this situation. Rangers lead by Kelly. a goal, but the Avalanche have just scored and now get a chance on the power play. A uh, penalty. Called on Tanner Glass for unsportsmanlike conduct. And the Avalanche get their fourth power play opportunity of the game. Shift ahead by Dominic Moore into the Rangers zone. This is a lot into of the Avalanche zone, excuse me. Yeah, this is a lot of power plays for the New York Rangers to give up. They're one of the 16 clubs in the league like that average less than 10 minutes in penalties a game. Nash backhands it out. 120 left in the glass penalty. The Rangers have had just one power play chance in this game. This is the fourth, as I said, for Colorado. Nash. You see him get a lot of penalty kill all the time. But Mike, again, talking with the Rangers, listening to their coaches this morning, he's been their best up front penalty kill. Of all the forwards, he has been the most effective. It's the Rangers team, though, that has scored seven shorthanded goals this season. Have they been important, Mike? They're seven and zero. They scored short handed goal. Thirty-five seconds left in the glass penalty. Holden the center to Duchesne. Ripped around the boards. Talbot can't slow it down. Abs have got it. Redmond dancing. He turns. He shoots. There's a chance. Oh, backhand try by Duchesne. Robbed by Cam Talbot. Yep. I maintain Mike one of the toughest things in, in, in hockey right now is look at look at the lineup of guys. There are four Rangers, two Avalanche players, never mind the goaltender, in, in Redmond's way trying to get that, that puck through. They just closed down that shooting line. One of the toughest things in the in hockey right now is getting the puck on net from the point. It is so difficult. 20 seconds left in the glass all the ends have had one shot on this power play. They're now shooting the range. 24-23. Yeah. Bet all the shots in this period. Nice and Barry looking for an opening. 
Over towards the Landeskog. He's got the abs goal. Back to Barry. Flipped it over to Landeskog. Down low. Zip to O'Reilly. Back to Landeskog. Played it back to the point for Barry. Time running out in the power play. Glass is out of the box. Abs still have the puck though. Shot down low. O'Reilly center. Here's a chance. Backhand. And it got blocked. Dug out by McKinnon. Pass. One timer. Ripped wide of the net. And it comes around above the glass and out of play. Look, the Avalanche not able to score in that power play. Had one shot on goal during that two minute power play. Well, for the Avalanche, Mike, it, it's, you know, it, it's so frustrating, but you just got to get back to playing a five on five. I mean, you can't, you can't let get discouraged by that. I mean, and it has been a discouraging power play for the Avalanche, but. I mean, they're cooking right now. They're playing really well. New York's falling back into that trap that a lot of teams yep. in the third period, especially here at the Pepsi Center, fall into. You get a little fatigued. You sit back in the abs, just keep coming. Pangay centered in front. And it's tapped back with it. Mitchell. Oh, the abs just tilted the ice. Back to the point. Everberg hit by Zuccarello. Got it out of the zone. The Rangers still without a shot in this period. Uh, you see, like what they're doing as they come onto the ice, and the Avalanche had the puck in their zone. Not one guy was past center ice for the Rangers. I mean, they were just sitting back, group of five, waiting for the Avalanche to come at them. And, you know, I, for a minute, Remember when, when the Avalanche first got here, everyone talked about the altitude, how it's going to affect teams, and teams are trying to figure out how to, you know, to come into the Avalanche. You come in the day of, two days before, one right. day before, the night before, whatever. The, the, Detroit always used to like to come in the same day, which was sometimes illegal, but that's what they were going to do. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, and then for a while, it just became a non-factor. But I think it's actually getting to be something again, because we've seen it. I, I do those games down between benches. An injured linesman, by the way. Yeah, gotten back up to his skates. Getting back to the puck. Gets away from Hayes. 9.40 to go in the third period. But all Avalanche here in the third. They've gotten a goal from McGillan. That came at 6.43. They've had all the shots in this third period. Rangers have had none. Back in and out. They just, they're just back on their heels right now, the Rangers, yeah. just playing that prevent defense, and that just gets you in trouble. And the Avalanche had been down this road before. Here's a chance, and it shoots. Score! He just knew it. It was coming. And the Avalanche have tied this game at three. Jan Hayden. And there's still 9.16 to go. And the Avalanche are coming, Mike, and the Rangers are on the ropes. Well, I don't think we've seen a Ranger in the Avalanche zone all nope. period long. And great passing, but I'll tell you, a couple of guys, Mike, that have made, now, Hayden is obviously going to get credit for this goal. Great play, jumping into the play. But the, on the last goal, the turnover goal that went to Aginla, Stewart made the play, like part of it, by coming down hard. And Aginla comes in, and Talbot's been on ice for both of the goals here in this third period. So, I mean, they're... Right now, this is a game now you got to take because you've got to go. Hayden's first goal of the season. What a goal that is for Colorado. Got his own rebound to tie up the game at three. Shot goes wide of the net. Well, the end just keep on coming. Equalizer. They're trying to do what has been done just once before in a long time against uh, the Rangers that score a winning goal against the Rangers when they've had the lead going to the third period uh, this, right now it is all ass we got a little example of Nathan McKinnon and how strong his escapes Nash tried to power move to the inside and McKinnon not only cut, which isn't easy, but sort of pushed him to the ground. Got it center right. Flying with the puck. Makes the pass. Hayes cutting in. Pass. Score! By the Rangers, Carl Hagelin. Once again, Kevin Hayes. What a game he's having, Peter. 
Goodness. And it's 4 3 for the Rangers on their first shot of the period. And, and really and truly, Mike, the first time that they have entered the zone with any sort of control of the puck. Coming down, Mike. The numbers are fine right here. You see five avalanche, Mike, in the picture. The puck just, does it hit something and sort of throw the avalanche off a little bit? It bounces around, but Mike, still, there were there were five avalanche players down low and sticks were on the ground for the New York Rangers. You got to get the sticks off the ice. 4-3 for New York. New York goal, scored by number 62, Carl Hagelin. Hagelin with, with the goal. Chip down the boards. St. Louis after the puck. Of the third period. from Hayes. Battle for the puck. Mitchell ends up with it for Colorado. Pass up ice for Tango. And Devin again. Pass to the corner for Tange. Stripped away. Boyle. He's surrounded. Threw off the puck. Pass in front, and it was Hayes. We got it. Shift it back out to center ice. Puck rolls into the end zone. 7.15 to go. Barry's pass finds Duchesne. Cutting in. Nice move. And a kick save made by Talbot. Backhanded down the ice. Going wide. And icing called on the New York Rangers. Well, Matt Duchesne, he, he does this really well. Mike, he, he's a left-handed shot coming down the right wing. But watch him put it under the stick. And I mean, Stahl's a really good defenseman. And he just kind of chips it there. And this is where that, you know, now in his sixth year, he make, he's, he's at his NHL strength. This is the next four or five years, as strong as Matt Duchesne's going to be in the National Hockey League. He can now power by guys. Shane pointed to something for this face off the foot. He wants it behind. He wants it behind the hash mark. Trying to cheat a little bit. Lonnie Cameron is the linesman. Drops the puck. Miller battles along the wall with the Ginla. Miller lost the stick. Hayes played the puck behind the net. Stall hard off the boards and out. Deep enough. It's rolling and yes, they call icing. On the Rangers. One of the things the Rangers do, Mike, we've seen a lot of clubs do it. And it used to be, there's no way you'd do this before. But the play would be in the corner. And instead of throwing it up the wall, they throw it right into the middle to the man that's mm -hmm. standing in the slot. Yes. And we've seen a lot of teams use that because you don't expect it. Well, the Avalanche obviously have scouted this well because they have been a couple times standing right there. But they've also stripped the man a couple of times to the puck. And a couple of scoring chances because of that. Puck bounced over Hayda's stick. Comes to the corner. Avalanche with a couple of goals in this period from uh, Jerome McGinley, Jan Hayda. Tied the game at three. But then Hanglin from Hayes and Klein at 12 02. The yeah, defensemen have been as active in this period as we've seen them in a long time. They have, they're, Mike, they're coming on every single opportunity. Any kind of puck is thrown down the boards, they're right on top. Pass across the rink for Derek Broussard. He shoots. And uh, Arlomov makes the save. Only the second shot of the period for the Rangers, and then things get a little scrambly back behind the net after the save was made. You see Jan Hayda without a helmet. Well, what a wild third period it's been. 3-1 start, then a Ginlin. And a 3-2. Hayda, first goal of the season, 3-3. Haglin puts the Rangers back ahead by one. Let's answer tonight's uh, Did You Know question, brought to you by Stevenson Automotive. Uh, earlier we asked you. Roma Ginlin, runner-up for the Calder Trophy, which goes to Rookie of the Year back in 1997. Which other Avs player has been runner-up? The answer? Might surprise you a little bit. C2 Brad Stewart. Brad Stewart then with the San Jose Sharks. You see Gomez, Alex Tange was fifth in voting that particular season. And you know, it has been a very understated but a wonderful career for Brad Stewart. Every place he's been, Mike, I talked to people that were there when he played, and every, the trainers, everybody was, you know, there's nothing but compliments. And you know how he plays the game, Mike? He plays the game the right way. He plays tough. But he'll take a hit. He doesn't go crazy and swing at the stick. But you know, you 
You can grab your head up the next time he's coming. Because <laughs> Mr. Stewart's a coming to call. Him. I think the best compliment for when you see other teams, Peter, he makes those hits. You don't see them coming right back for Stewart trying to get at him as if it was a cheap shot. No, it's one of those ones where it's like, oh boy, I'm glad it was you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously. Oh, no, no. The puck climbs up the glass. It hit the netting. I think they're going to move the face off into the neutral zone. Yeah, we're just talking about those hits by Stewart, Mike. I mean, that, that's what happens. When they're good and clean, there is no beat. There is a, nobody is all over you because of it. They may not like it, and you may be upset, but in, in your hockey heart, you know it was a good hit. And as I say, players on the bench are going, I don't know, I hope you're okay. That wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> it's, it's ruthless down there. Then they always give you the, the question, didn't you see him? <laughs> well, if I saw him, I wouldn't be standing with bloody nose. <laughs> not, not the smartest group, by the way. Did you see him? Rangers have the puck. They've only had a couple of shots in this period. There's another one, and Varlamov has it deflect off him and out of play. Well, Mike, it's been another milestone night for Jerome McGinley. As he, he ties now for 19th all time, but Mark Recky. As far as goals scored, it's going to be last game, Mike, he passed Dino Cicerelli to 46 spot by himself in points. Number, number 19 in goals, Mike. It's going wow. to be a while now. It's going to yeah. be into next year before he, you know, may takes a run at Yari Curry. But that's a pretty magic number, Mike. 600. Yeah, another yeah. Avalanche play. We've seen some 600s, oh, haven't we? We, we saw Curry's 600. Uh, yeah, absolutely. More than you would think, 600s that we have seen that players score in an Avalanche uniform. We've seen a lot of guys get number 500. Yep. Now there was Mullen, there was Shannon. Didn't Iserman get, get against yeah. the Avalanche also? Yeah. yeah. Mads have the puck. McLeod trying to center. And the puck comes free. Mads keeping it alive. Duchesne has a 440 to go in the third period. Avalanche coming on like gangbusters here in the third period. The puck rolled on its edge, but no icing because Nash coming after it. Spins off the check, loses the puck, he's upended by Hayda. Rangers have got it, pass behind the net for Nash. He's got an assist in this game, but that's it. Shot scored by Rick Nash. Are you kidding me? you got to be kidding me. Mike, if you watch this whole sequence, and we're now 55 minutes into this hockey game, this is the difference in Rick Nash's game. He's able to make these kind of moves in the first period early, but I mean, in the third period late. Now, right here, watch him be strong. He just comes straight out, Mike, and he's got that wide, wide. He's so long with that stick. And now, Mike, he made a play before that where he held the man off. Look at him. And he, you know, did everything right, but the Avalanche is hard knocking him down, but he just made a play. And Mike, and that, you know, that may not be the game winner in tonight's game or whatever, but that's what he's been doing. That kind of goal, a key goal that separates the Rangers from the other team or ties the game. And he has, I'm telling you, Mike, I've watched a lot of their games. He's been as good as anybody in the goal, goal, any forward in the league this year. It is interesting. Now that's number 34 this season for Rick Nash. As Varlamov has gone to the bench. Four minutes to go. And the Varlamov off for an extra skater. And the Avalanche go to work on what they have done now six times this season with a goaltender pulled and scored a goal. Hayda kicks the puck to the corner. But just to make the point back, Peter, about the just to finish up the thought as uh, Redmond sends it across one-timer. Stopped by Talbot. Loose oh. puck and it came right along the goal line or very close to it. Another chance. And that is uh, off of Stepniak into the corner. With the puck is Landeskog. Again, we see the Avalanche. They pull the goaltender and the other team can't get the puck and get it out of the zone. Until right there, that finally happens. Peter, just to finish up the thought, I want to say something about Nash. He's it's funny when it's 34 goals when the pucks are going in for you during the course season when you're having one of those seasons like Nash is having these kind of shots go in and it's 5-3 Rangers. Well, Semyon Barlama back in Nets, obviously the, the face off in the avalanche zone, but he'll be 
literally following the play up the ice. As the Avalanche get the play and the Rangers back off, he'll just be coming right with it, and the man will be, Mike, he'll be at the far end of the bench for the Avalanche. Marley comes in the short side, doesn't seem like much. It's about 30 feet you gain by just jumping on from that far end. He was pulled with four minutes to go in the third. The Avalanche in their last game against Winnipeg scored a goal with the Varlama on the bench, but then ultimately lost that game to the Winnipeg Jets. Four times they have pulled the goaltender and picked up a point. Chance, shit, and it goes wide. Again, has got it. Varlama has made his way to the bench. And the Avalanche trying to work their magic again. Into the corner, tag in. And it comes free for Duchesne. Stall on him. And the puck back to the corner, Tangay, trying to center, stole away, carried up ice, shot to the empty net, and missed oh, by Kreider. Into the corner, 2.30 to go. McLeod, Tangay, gains the line, coming wide, circles the net, back to the point for Tyson Berry. Shot to traffic, gets the body and comes wide, back to the point. Shot, knocked down. Though he knocked it down, he actually kept it in the glove. Talbot's got it. It'll be a face-off in the Rangers zone with 2.20 to go. Mike, it has been such an oh, interesting situation I've been asked so many times. Penalty call uh, on Tangay, Peter. Penalty call on Tangay. Now, there is nothing good about this. The only thing that you can do, Mike, you can just start firing the puck into the zone and chase it down. When you get it, you can fire from your own zone and have all your guys heading into the zone and not worry about an icing call. But that's uh, not really much of a plus in this situation. Rangers have possession after the faceoff. Down the time. boards, Number back toward the point. Zuccarello shoots it across. Shot by Hunwick. Save made by Marlomov. And the puck sent down into the Rangers zone. It's a power play chance for the Rangers. Marlomov still in net. Boyle tees up the puck. Around the shelf. Back into the Colorado end. Zuccarello turns, makes the pass. Broussard to the point for Boyle. Cross site, Zuccarello back to Boyle. Top of the circle for Sard. Boom, the shot. Club save made by Varlamo. 140 left to go. Well, Nash standing right in front of him. Semi Varlamo. Like he just sort of pulls his way. Watch the right side of your screen. He sort of just moves past Nash and just flashes that glove. I believe in fact someone called a timeout. The Avalanche, yeah. uh, Peter uh, Patrick Waugh, he is uh, allotted timeout with 140 left to go in the third. Rangers lead by two, 120 left to go in the Tangay penalty. As back on the ice Saturday night, and they're hosting the Dallas Stars, one of the teams in their way. They try to get back into the playoffs. Don't miss a minute of action. Complete coverage begins at 6.30 on altitude. I know it's a big day for Peter at St. Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Got a full day of things happening. You betcha, baby. You betcha. But Frank, quick chance to give it credit to Kevin Chevelday for the Winnipeg Jets. He was able to pull off like the biggest trade in recent history. There was eight pieces involved. You know, six of them were first round draft picks. I mean, five of them were first players were first round draft picks. And then the first round draft pick, and then Claude Lemieux and Brennan, who was the first pick of the second round. I mean, you just don't make bigger trades than that. Yeah, Kevin Shovelday off. Outstanding job. He's one of big Jets lost tonight, but they just they believe solidified their chance of finally making the playoffs as the new Winnipeg Jets. What they get to do, we just saw we just saw Buffalo be the first star or second star in the game against the Avalanche at forward. Now he's able with Stafford coming to come back to defense. So they get stronger as you look at the trade here. Look at this trade. I mean, it is unbelievable. Kane, fourth overall, his draft year. Bogosian, third overall. Kasdorf was a later draft draft, 157 overall. Myers, a first round pick. Stafford, a first round pick. Joel Ar Armia, I believe, Mike, he may be the real dark horse in this thing as far as, you know, that key guy. Great talent. 6'3, about 210. He's in Rochester right now. He's a young guy, young Finnish player. 
And then Lemieux, as I said, was the 31 draft pick. And a pretty good pedigree, too. Yes, exactly. And we've seen those shot towards the empty net, and it's in. From center ice, uh, the captain of the Rangers, Ryan McDonough. Scores the empty net goal to make it six to three. The Rangers are going to get the victory. Boy, what a change. This, this you talk about a game. Second period, the, the change from where the Avs had a chance, Peter, on a five on three to make it 2 2, change the complexion of the game. Rangers go ahead 3 1. Then they come out flat as can be. Avs have everything going for them. Tie it up at three. Looks like, I mean, they've got all the shots. Everything's happening. First 10 minutes. Rangers then score three goals and, and, and win this one going away. I mean, we were trying to remember it. We think, and, and, and they, they obviously were in the zone. It was the first time that they were in the Avalanche zone with any pressure in the entire period, and they scored. Definitely their first shot. Yeah, they scored the first shot, and then Nash shows that's, us why he's had such a great season, and because that's the one that sort of shifted everything. And the Avalanche are pulling the goals down because they have to. And, you know, a, a game that, boy, this is... I haven't seen many, Mike, like this, no. where, where it was like up and down and around and the whole thing. The Rangers dominate the first. The Avalanche looked like they're back in their heels. And then in the second, it looked like, as you mentioned, that 2-2 two -two was sitting right there with a five on three. But, uh, but also, Peter, after the goal was scored by Ginla, Avs had a power play. Yep. One score. Yeah, and it, a good score, and it was like, huh. Yeah. And they, get, they did get one, though, from Hayda to tie the game. 20 seconds to go. Shot by Max Talbot. Get blocked. And for the Rangers, going to get to 69 points. And uh, they still got their eye on their first place. There's going to be a penalty on uh, on Glass for his hit. So a very late power play chance coming for the Avalanche. Unless the time just runs out. Shot by Mitchell. And dribbles wide. So they never called the penalty. It was a delay call. But this game is over. And one of the most unusual yes. games you and I have ever witnessed for the Avalanche. A absolutely. With, you know, so much riding on it, it adds to the emotional part of the game. You, you're wanting so much for them to get something going. And there were those moments. And then they did. When they got to 3-3, Mike, you're thinking the ice is tilted this way. They're yeah. coming. And then you're almost in shock when the Rangers score to make it 4-3. And then Nash and, and Bingo. And then the empty netter makes it a final of 6-3. Peter, let's... Uh, so, folks, our uh, selection of the three stars of the game brought to you by Aspire Natural Sports Drinks. Well, starting at the bottom, Rick Nash, the one thing that's not on there is the fact that a well, great job killing penalties for the New York Rangers. You know, a goal assist, Jerome again, a goal and assist, a plus two, and he tires Mark Recchi now 19th, 19th all-time in scoring. But, Mike, the player of the game, I mean, that was the easiest first star we've seen in a while, I think. <laughs> yes. He had a goal and two assists and everything about it was beautiful pass, beautiful goal, beautiful pass, and helps it, the New York Rangers win again, Mike, and 21-6-1 and one, their last 28 games. That gets them to 32 victories for the Avalanche. Unfortunately, that's four consecutive losses. Again, the final score tonight, 6-3 for the Rangers. Please join us again on Saturday. The Avalanche will host the Dallas Stars. We start at 6-30.